Hello and welcome to this introductory course for Kali Linux for Hackers. We have designed this course to introduce aspiring hackers to the Linux operating system and in particular to the Kali Linux operating system. So if you're brand new to Linux, you've never used it before or you've never used Kali before, this is the perfect course for you. We're going to be building up on some basic skills and moving up gradually in the difficulty until you become proficient and very comfortable with Linux. This is not an advanced course though. You're not going to be doing any super difficult stuff and rebuilding Linux kernels and all that crazy stuff you hear about. We're not going to be doing that. Our objective from this course is to make you as comfortable as possible with Linux operating systems. So if you encounter one during an ethical hacking engagement, you know exactly what to do. Or if you decide to use Linux at home, for example, instead of Windows, you'd be comfortable with using it, setting it up, and doing the day-to-day -day tasks that you do with your Windows operating system. First, let me start by saying Linux is really not that scary. It really isn't. A lot of people, when they see the command line, they freak out to them. This is like a nightmare. What I want to do is I want to take this nightmare and show you how pretty and cute and lovely it could be. And I want to give you the fundamentals and the basics and the foundations so you can build up on those gradually. And if you wish so, you can keep advancing until you become a Linux ninja. You might be wondering and asking yourself, but do I have to really do it? Do I really have to learn Linux? We did the ethical hacking for beginners course and we didn't even touch Linux. The only way we got exposed to it was when we hacked into it towards the end of the course and we broke into the metasploitable machine. So do I really need to learn? Yes. And here's why. Most hacking tools are Linux based. So if you're somebody who wants to take your ethical hacking career seriously, you absolutely definitely must learn Linux. It will make your life so much easier, trust me. It is a bit difficult at first, but by the end of this course, I can guarantee you that you're going to be falling in love with Linux. When you see the kind of things and tricks that you can do, you, still, you will start to wonder how on earth did I do that without Linux before. Needless to say, you will also face Linux targets. We saw that in the Hacking for Beginners course, and you are going to be continuously seeing that throughout your career as an ethical hacker. So you must absolutely know your way around these targets. Speaking of targets, you might think that Linux is only on Linux servers, but you'd be surprised where else you can find this operating system. For example, did you know that Android is built on Linux? In the future, we might be releasing a course on Android hacking. If you don't know Linux, you're going to struggle with that course. But if you're comfortable with Linux, I'm not saying an expert and I'm not saying an advanced user. If you're just comfortable with Linux, you're comfortable with the fundamentals that we're going to be teaching in this course, you'll find yourself sailing through the Android course very comfortably. Not only Android, wireless controllers, firewalls, even TVs, your PlayStation. There are so many devices that are based in Linux. It's all around you. You might not know it, but it really is. So trust me on this. Get comfortable with Linux and you will be doing yourself a huge favor. This course is going to be focused on Kali. That does not mean that whatever we learn is not usable on other Linux systems. Of course it will be. 90% of the things that we're going to be talking about in this course, you can use on any Linux system. However, I want you to do this course on Kali so you can start familiarizing yourself with it. Kali is built on a Linux distribution called Debian. It's built for penetration testing and for forensics analysis. It has over 300 tools, meaning that this operating system is not suited for non-pen testers. It's designed, it's built, it's architectured for pen testers and forensics analysts. If you are not interested in pen testing, Kali is not for you. So pause for a second and think about that. If you're really not interested in Kali, don't use Kali. Download any other Linux version. You can still follow up with this course. Absolutely, no problem with that at all. But maybe you want to get used to another distribution. There's a ton more. For example, Red Hat is one that you constantly see in enterprises. If in your enterprise or at work you use Red Hat, you might want to get Fedora, for example, which is the free version of Red Hat. If you want to use Linux at home, you might want to get Ubuntu. It has one of the prettiest graphical user interfaces and it's super easy to use. So if you're ready to carry on, I need you to keep this in mind. This course builds up on a lot of concepts from the Hacking for Beginners course. 
For example, when we talk about things like IP addresses, ports, services, FTP server, web server, SSH server, and so on, I am going with the assumption that you already know what all that is. If you do not know, please go and review the Hacking for Beginners course. If you haven't done the course already, please go and do it. Make sure you're comfortable with these concepts before we proceed. Our focus in this course is on Linux commands and Linux configuration and so on. I don't want to be wasting a lot of time explaining what an IP address is. That's already been explained in other courses. Because we have a lot of ground to cover. A lot. We'll have a first quick look on Kali's interface and then we'll dive straight away into some basic commands so you can get comfortable with navigating around the system. Then we're going to be looking at how to manage packages, how to install software, remove software. We're going to then look at how you can archive and compress files and directories. Now we're going to be looking at one of my favorite topics, wildcards. Following that, I'm going to show you how you can get help. If you ever find yourself stuck, you don't know what a command does or what command to use, how you can get help and sort it out. All of that is still part one. <laughs> Part two is when we dig a little bit deeper. We'll start with something light and I'll introduce you to a text editing tool called Nano. Then we're going to be looking at some basic network configuration. Following that, we'll start having some fun with configuring services such as SSH, web service, and so on. You'll be turning your Linux box into a web server and an SSH server. Then we'll look at users and groups and how we can control those and the permissions around them. Once we're done, we'll look at process management, how we can control processes, stop them, background them. We're going to be doing some really cool stuff with processes. And last but not least, we'll look at output redirection and piping. I'm going to be showing you some practical examples from my day-to-day -day work, things that I use when I'm doing my job as a pen tester. And that would be part two. There is one more part. In part three, we're going to take everything that we learned and we're going to put it together to build a Linux target. We're going to be downloading a minimal Ubuntu version, a very small, tiny Linux, and we're going to build it up from scratch in a way that it's vulnerable to a particular attack. I'm going to show you how I created the target system for the Web Application Fundamentals course. If you've done that course, at the end, there's a virtual machine that I ask you to download and to hack. I'm going to show you how I created this virtual machine for you. And then I'm going to show you how we can use the Linux commands to hack this machine and achieve our target. Before we move into the next section, this is a slide that is quite unique to this course. This is the post-exploitation slide. Whenever you see the slide in any section, this is a note or a slide that tells you how you can use the information presented in that particular section after you compromise a host to expand your control. In other words, if you are in an ethical hacking engagement and you come across a Linux system that you managed to successfully get into, you compromise that Linux machine. Compromising it is not the end of the story. There's a lot more that can be done after you compromise the machine. Because normally, you would compromise the machine, but if the system administrator is a bit switched on, you wouldn't be able to get access as root straight away. You will get access as a low privileged user. And you will need to do some homework. You need to do some digging around to be able to find a vulnerability through which you can escalate your privileges and become root and take full control over your system. To do that, you're going to be needing some of the techniques that I'm going to be explaining in this course. So whenever you see the post-exploitation slide, pay special attention to it because it will give you some tips and tricks that you can use after you compromise a Linux host. Here's the setup that I'd like you to do before we get started. We're going to download and install Kali on a virtual machine. We've seen this before in other courses. We know what a virtual machine is and we know how to set it up. If you've not seen this before, a virtual machine emulates the functionality of a computer system. It's as if you have a separate physical computer. So you install this virtual machine software, usually VMware or VirtualBox, for example. And once that's set up on your, let's say, Windows system, inside that virtual machine, you can install another operating system. And that will be treated as a completely separate operating system. 
So what I'd like you to do is either install VMware or VirtualBox and then install Kali on either of them. I'm going to attach a link to a YouTube tutorial that I've done a while back. It is slightly outdated. It's an older version of Kali, but it still works perfectly fine. So go ahead, get it set up. Once you're ready, we can get started with the course. I really hope you're excited about this as I am.